Hi, and welcome to Cloudberry Hollow, the Christmas edition. What we have here are five balls of clay of black for the body and the tail. Then we go off onto our red for the hat. What gray scraps of clay put together for the paws, blue for the eyes, and we have white scraps for the accents on the hat and the scarves. So we're gonna start off with our black clay. And I am taking the clay and I will be cutting that bad boy in half. Okay, there we have it. After we warm the clay up and we're going to roll it into a little tube of clay like we have here and he's coming out a little flat but we're gonna flatten him out like that and you want it to go into the shape and size that you would like your cat to be so I want mine to be about four or five inches tall when it's complete what I'm doing here is making it to the size and shape that I want it to be. There you go. I putting my magic hands there. Not sure what I'm doing. That's okay. And I'm going to do a armature for the head. The reason for having an armature for the head is because we don't want a solid piece of clay for the head. It'll extend the bake time and not only will it extend the bake time, you're going to risk your clay to crack. I have the original shape that I wanted and I'll put another piece of foil around it. And what I do is I use my little rolling tool to help me. It's just easier for my hands to do so. And then I will do this for a little bit until it's a smooth ball of clay. Once I'm happy with it, I will judge how big I want it to be on top of the body. That looks pretty good. Once I'm through with the armature for the head, I will tear off a flattened piece of clay of the black and I'll wrap the clay around the armature for the head, as you see me doing here. And you will just wrap that around, pressing on your seams and rolling the clay in between your hands. Once you have all that done, and have it all smoothed out. And have it the shape that you want it. You will go ahead and take a look at it again on your body to make sure that's exactly how you like it. From here, I am going to take some wire for the head and we're going to prep it to attach to the body. That looks pretty good. I take this wire and I am going to curve the bottom of the wire with my pliers. I do this so the wire catches on the inside of the clay and I'm measuring it out to ensure that I don't poke onto the bottom of the clay, it hits the middle of the clay. It's a good practice that I have and you can choose to do this or not to do this but it just ensures that it doesn't slip out of the clay after baking. I'm going to go ahead and cut the top wire piece because I don't want the top wire piece to come out of the head. Here I'm just re-verifying the way that I want the head to be positioned on the bottom. 
and then I'll poke it through. Keep in mind that the head does have foil inside of it, so we're going to paint some Bacon Bond on the wire. Then afterwards, we will go ahead and bend the wire over, put that hook on there, and then push it through that hole. Then we will go ahead and attach the head to the body as such. Very slowly. Ba-bam. There we go. Just like that. Don't worry about your fingerprints. Just kind of work through them. There you go. See, and now they're pretty tight. I'm going to put him to the side. So now that we have the head attached to the potty, we're going to work on the legs. I now have the second half of the black, and we're going to start dividing the black into portions. But the black will go for the legs and the arms. So if you see what I have here, I'm going to start manipulating the legs. So I have four round circles and we're going to keep them as even as possible. So we have four, two arms and two legs. And then we're going to go ahead and cut about a quarter off of each. And these will go for the little paws. And then I have the white. And what I'm thinking at this point that I'm going to connect the white to the little paws. On the top and the bottom. Like so. And then I decide that I'm going to mix them, and that's what I did. And those will be the pads. I will proceed to go ahead and cut these in half. And I do the same on the tops and the bottoms. Then you'll see what I have for the legs. And you can see them kind of forming. The legs, the ankles, and then the pads of the feet. Now that we have everything laid out, the, the only thing we have left is for the face with the arms. And I am looking at what I'm going to put for the tail. And this is what this last ball is. I'm going to roll this out a little bit to see if it's going to eh, try to look proportionally correct with my figuring thus far. So I'm just kind of rolling it out and checking it. And I'm trying to see if I have enough clay actually for the for what's going on. Unfortunately, I'm out of frame just for you to see what I'm doing. And I've made the decision at this point that I will have enough clay and I won't have to go and prep any more clay to go on this particular tail. Pointing to you another piece of white clay that I have. I'm going to make a cap for the tail. What I'm going to do is cut it up a little bit and roll it up into a, a ball and cap the tail with it. And towards the end of the cat, we'll work on the tail. I do this to ensure that I have the right amount of clay to finish up my figurine and if I don't I will know ahead of time whether or not I need to prep out more clay. And I am flattening it out and I am just going to stick it on just like this. This is far from over. Oh, clay underneath the nail. Don't want that.
All right, there we go. Tail, legs, arms. Ta da! Next. Our ears that we have are this really pretty blue color, and it's going to go for the ears and the paws, as I pointed out. And we're going to cut this color in half. Put that to the side, and I'm going to cut these in half and a quarter, just like that. And I'll put those into the back for the ears, and then I'll save these for the four paws, and that's it. Moving on to our white clay, there's my hair. We are going to start dividing the white clay into portions for the face. We're going to save white clay for the eyes and for the muzzle. So here I am starting on the round parts for the eyeballs. I'm going to roll those up. You want them pretty round, as round as you can. We're going to move that little guy over here so you can see him. And then we're going to get two larger pieces. And those are about quarters as well. A little bit bigger than the eyes. And you're going to roll those up as well. And then you're going to stick these on the face together to make his little muzzle. And then we're going to add the bottom part of his chin. And once we put this on, um, you're not going to see it. I unfortunately uh, cut this part out on accident, but you're going to get your medium ball stylus. You're going to press indentions on his head and you're going to drop the eyes into the indention and then you're going to flatten them out a little bit. And this gives depth into his eye sockets. As you can see that right there. Let me see how that works out. You want to smooth it out just a little bit. But you don't want to press it all the way in that the white is like flushed with the black. And we're going to take the blue, the baby blue that we made. We're going to cut that in half into two little quarters. We're going to make two small balls of clay from that. And once we do that, we're going to put that on top of the whites. Smash that down with your finger. And I like to scrape that up and use the shinier part. Now it's not really going to be seen. I just like that look better. We'll go ahead and put this. You don't have to put it in the center. It's more where he's going to be looking. And then you'll repeat this process with a black clay with a smaller round. And then press that down onto his eye. Again, wherever you want him to be looking at. Him on this one. And then we want to add highlights to the eye. Go get a little tiny fleck of white and you're just going to drop it onto the eye. 
could be a little round fleck or just a little piece. Just put it on the top of the eye. It just has to be a very, very tiny piece of clay. When you're adding highlights to the eye, you don't have to add a giant piece of clay. It just has to be very small. You add it to the eye and then you can smash it down with your ball stylus and you're going to smear it on. That'll actually will make a pretty large highlight as you see here. And I did it to the other eye and there you go. And now you have a beautiful face. Now if you wanted this to be a girl, you could add eyelashes if you wanted to. And I would advise if you're going to have a black cat, put a different color eyelashes. And what I was pointing out there is that we were going to add a scarf on him. And that will go across his neck and then down his chest. So I'm smashing down this piece of clay. And we're just going to work it a little bit. I don't have this clay extremely soft. I don't want it to be super soft and sticky. I still want it to have a little bit of firmness in it because I am working with black clay. I don't want the white to get tremendously dirty. I'm going to put it down the neck a little bit. I'm going to start blending it a little bit, not too much, with my medium ball stylus. I moved on to my legs. So there I have two legs. You see me blending it all in with my spoon tool. And this is a smaller spoon tool. You can see with the scarf that I also added some texture and that texture was just made with a smaller stylus. What we have here is if your legs come apart at the seams where they connect, you can always add small little tiny ropes of clay in between as, and that's what I'm showing you right there. If, if you feel that they're not secure enough, just roll a little bit in between your fingers. and add them in between to add more security to your clay. This will secure it down and blend it in. I love this little spoon tool. It gets in all the small areas that you can't reach with any other tool. It doesn't leave a lot of the indention marks that your smaller stylus would leave. So here we are finishing up the leg. And we want to blend in the back. You see where I attach the leg and that's where the tail would go into the legs. In that little triangle area right there. And you can smooth it out with your fingers where the legs all attach to. Right there where you have the little flat parts on the leg, that's where you're going to attach the little ankle. I was showing you um, with my tool where I put all the indentions. 
here's the pre-mixed clay that we did earlier in the video. And those are where my ankles and my paws are going to attach to. And what I'm going to do here is choose what colored paws that I want because as you mix it, you have like a different variety of colors that you want. So it's nice color marbling. So I decided here what colors I felt would look nicest. With that, I'm also going to make toes out of here. Toes in the pads of feet. So I'm going to roll these out kind of into a tubular shape to match the legs. And then we'll cut them off on the ends so we can just stick them onto the legs like that. That's exactly what we want. For the two remainder, I am going to cut those in half. And one half, half is going to be the pad of the foot and the other half will be the toes. So I'll make that into a ball and then the other ones I'll make into five balls. Now that I have everything into the five balls, we're going to squish all the toes together to make a paw. And here you can see where I have all of them together and I made my little paw with five toes. See how that works out right there? It looks good. I will take the little ankles that I have here and I'll scoop the paws up and I'll turn them over just like that and I'll put the paws on top and I'll do the same for the other side and I'll stick that together like that. Shape that up a little bit. If they turn out too fat, don't worry about it. It's clay. You can always shape them up and put them together. There you go with my little paws. Now I'm taking this tool and I'm going to blend the ankles with the legs making it look like there is some fur in place. I don't want the texture all over my figurine, just at these joints and maybe some other places. And I'm going to continue to do this for both legs. And then I'll eventually get my small stylus and I will add some texture this way. After that, we will add little pads to his feet with the clay that we set aside earlier. I am cutting it and dividing it into the exact proportions that I need. And then we'll be pressing it with our fingers, just like before. And then we'll scrape it up with our tool. We'll add the big pods first. And then you see here, I already created all the small little pads. Then I will add each pad to each of the little toes. You'll see me do a couple here. Sorry about my camera. For some reason, we added the sensitivity way too high. Didn't realize it to the end of the shooting. So we try to cut a lot of it out so we don't blind everybody with everything. And now you see the paws. Now we have the arms. Here you see me fiddle around with the arms. I don't know if we're gonna put them inside or outside, but I decided to put them on the inside. 
They look like they got chopped off. That's because they did. I didn't like the way they turned out before, so I decided to add white to the end of the paws. You can see where I hacked them off on the left. Eww. And what I did is I rolled a white ball of clay and I smashed it down to the bottom of the legs and I took my explorer tool and I added some toes. You can use this option to the back paws as well by extending the lines all the way to the bottoms of the feet then adding the pads. Here I'm reattaching the arms. I'm removing them from where I originally placed them because I want them to look more like shoulders. And now I am blending it in. I start out with the spoon tool. And I use a combination of the spoon tool and my figures to do the, all of the final blending of the shoulders to the back. If your cat tends to bend over to one side while you're doing this, don't worry about it. Um, you will be able to bend them back into place the way you want to. Also, when you put them in the oven, you can prop them up with glass and he'll turn out just fine. And there you see how I smooth them out in the back. Go ahead and work on the tail so there I showed you that I had this on the tail this little white cap on the tail and we're going to move the white cap down I thought I was going to use my stylus and then the other side and I decided I didn't like it because my clay had cooled down by that time and I started to use my finger so I smeared it down and this method actually turned out really well. I like the way it turned out. And we're just going to smooth it all the way down. We want it all uneven. And then we're going to blend it. See how that kind of looks like little ice caps? Yeah, it looks good. And then we're going to point it out towards the end of the tail, almost like a fox's tail. And I smoothed it out. And then we're going to make texture with this other dental tool. And I wish I knew what all the names of these dental tools were. I'd give it to you. I'll have to do research on that. And some of them are by design wax tools. I'm pressing pretty hard on some of this. Of course, you don't want to press all the way through the tail, but you want to give it some texture to look like fur. And I'm going to cut it off because it was a little bit too long, making it smaller because you do want it to go to that little triangle that I had in the back. As you see, it goes into that triangle. You gotta make it a little bit smaller. And then we're gonna go and check it out again. Does it fit? Why, yes it does. There we go. Pushing it down in there and we're gonna smooth it out with that little spoon tool. I love this spoon tool. And we're going to blend it out. And do we want it here? I think so. Roll that little tail up. Looks pretty good so far. Now we have the hat. So here you see me sticking a tool inside the tube of clay. And I'm starting to put pressure on the clay where the tool meets my finger and this helps me put a point to the end of the clay 
also helps me direct the tool to how deep I want the hat to be. And you're going to see me roll this out. And I have a camera shot there and how it's rolling out on the other side. Now I'm checking out how it deep it is and I'm sticking my thumb inside the clay, rolling it out and constantly going in a circle. You can see on the other side I have my fingers directing the size and the shape of the hat. You see it looks kind of like an elf's hat and it looks pretty good because I want it on the side of the cat's head. And there you go. I want to have it bend over and I'm going to let the clay have a natural bend to it. So I'm going to keep that. Now you see where the mark is I'm showing you. I want that to have an exposed ear. So I don't want the ear to go beyond that mark. There was that little blue ear that I had earlier in the video. Let me cut. And I have that ear and I'm going to put little tufts of fur in there. Will this work? I don't know. It could, it might, and it might just mash together. We'll have to figure this out. So I think I'm going to put three tufts of fur, and they're going to be really tiny tufts of fur. I'll put them all together. That's what I tried to do. Will I make it? I don't know. And then I'm going to round off these little ears because it was too pointy for me. I just wanted this to be a rounded ear more than my little pointed ear cats that I've made before. Oh, little straggler there. That looks pretty good. So I placed them on. There. He seems to be leaning. That's okay. We'll get that all fixed in the oven. And there you have a one-eared cat and we're done just kidding now that we have that deed done I was thinking about putting a tuft of hair on the side of his ear say that ten times and I'm using my scalpel to help me out Now that I have this done, here we go trying to get this accomplished and I'm now using my dental tool to try to help me smash that in there just a little bit. And I think I have that little hair done, it's looking pretty good. I'm going to place my hat around there, I'm showing you that I don't have my little white fur on there yet so we're gonna try to do that and the little puff ball at the end let's call it a puff ball today I'm using my ball stylus to give it some texture and when working with white clay and red clay and black clay it's really hard to keep the white clay clean so you constantly have to wash your hands if you can't keep the white clay clean never fret that's what white paint is for so there we have that can, if it's not sticking well, you can always do what I did and use your ball stylus to mix it in. But I'm doing so far so good with the white and the red. Red souffle um, bleeds a lot. Any of the darker colors will tend to bleed. So I 
pointed out there that I like the wrinkling effect that I'm having with the um, souffle right there. And I have a strip of white clay and I'm adding some texture to it. Again, this clay is not really soft. I don't want it soft and goopy because it's going to stick everywhere if I do that. scalpel here and this helps me cut um, precision lines when it's on a figurine at this point in time I thought I was done with the figurine and started after this I was going to start in using clay softener to take away all the fingerprints <laughs> but I first got some crucial parts like his nose so I have a little bit of red with some white and I mix those together to make a really soft pink and I cut it out into a triangle shape as you can tell right here one cut two cut pick it up Oh, three cuts. Darn it. Putting it on the face. I'm just going to go ahead and squish it on there like that. There we go. And we have a cute little nose. And now we're also going to put in some whiskers. So to put in some whiskers, we're going to add three little dots, and that's what I did. I put in three little dots, one, two, three, and I put it on both sides. And then I'm going to take some wire, and this is just some art wire that I have, and I'm going to cut the wire into four. Judging it from here, oops, cutting the wire into four. The two bottom pieces of the whiskers will be shorter than the top pieces. As we show here, I'm just swinging those things around. Poke those through. Now let's check that out. All right, one looks a little bit longer, so I'm going to go clip that out. Boom. All even. And now we're going to add some clay softener to take off some of those fingerprints I just put on it. After I had put some clay softener on it prior, so let's take off those fingerprints. Okay. All right. Look at that. How do you look at that? Two seventy five in the oven. 
for 25 minutes. We want it in 25 minutes because it's a little bit thicker in the body. And there you have it, Max the Christmas Cat. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like and the subscribe button. And we hope to see you next time on Cloudberry Hollow.